Are you facing mysterious joint pain, chronic fatigue, brain fog, or even that excess water weight that just won't go away? Have you tried eliminating gluten, taking a probiotic, or even seen an allergist, but they can't seem to figure out what's wrong? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you a simple rotational diet that will help you uncover your food sensitivities without even taking a lab, so you can lower inflammation and finally get that vitality you deserve. Hey, I'm David and I help people reclaim their lives from brain fog, chronic fatigue, and low self-esteem. So having a deep understanding of your bio-individuality is gonna be critical to optimizing your health and taking your life to the next level. And this is especially true when it comes to diet. A lot of times people are saying, oh, this is good and that's good, but you really have to understand what is good for you and what's your poison. And so um, when it comes to food sensitivities, removing food sensitivities or abstaining from those foods while you heal your gut for a little while can really be the missing link to remove those mysterious issues like the brain fog, the skin rashes, the rosacea, um, and of course that kind of five to 10 pounds of excess weight that just won't go away no matter how much you diet and exercise. So while I go into this in other videos in depth, you could check them out right here. Um, an IgG food sensitivity is basically an immune-based reaction, so think white blood cells, that happen 24 to 72 hours after you are exposed to a given food. So think of things like a brain fog, rosacea, skin rashes, mysterious joint pain that doesn't come from any particular injury, and um, suddenly kind of gaining weight, um, even though you maybe didn't deviate from uh, like a healthy lifestyle that much. So a couple things to point out here is that IgG food sensitivities are not allergies, so they are not those kind of acute reactions that happen immediately after food, like a peanut allergy where you know, your throat closes up, you have some sort of skin rash or something like that. And they are also not gonna be causing digestive issues. Can you have digestive issues in addition to food sensitivities? Of course, but they are not the root cause. A lot of conventional medical doctors are also gonna dismiss food sensitivities. They're gonna say, oh, well, that's not an allergy. That's some quackery. Uh, that's not a valid test. And they're often gonna cite something like, oh, there isn't a medical definition for a food sensitivity. Of course, uh, only conventional medical governing bodies are able to really come up with medical definitions for anything because any alternative practitioners or natural health practitioners, they are legally not allowed to um, treat or diagnose any diseases, so they have to use language that is, you know, by default a little bit more vague or they can get in trouble. So the result is that you have um, conventional medical doctors often telling people, well, okay, hey, you don't have an allergy, and I also don't have a name for the collection of symptoms that you're feeling, so it basically doesn't exist, so go home, eat a healthy lifestyle, get some rest, and come back when you qualify to take some medication. And so while conventional medical doctors, they do mean well, they're tied to a system that leaves people behind if, it does, if you don't fit neatly into their categories, which is really a shame and it doesn't have to be this way. So before we get into it, I'm just curious, which foods do you think you're sensitive to? Go ahead and leave that in the comments below. And also, what symptoms are you facing that you think might be from food sensitivities? Also go ahead and leave those below. All right, let's get started. So which foods are the biggest offenders? I like to call them the big three. So it's gonna be gluten, eggs, and of course, dairy. And so this is why if you choose to do a food sensitivity lab and you're unsure if you're sensitive to these foods, I recommend having a breakfast sandwich, something like a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich, one to two days before doing the food sensitivity lab because then you'll know for sure um, if you are sensitive to these foods because you'll have recently been exposed to all three at once. Okay, so here's the rotational diet for uncovering your food sensitivities without even taking a lab. So if you want a detailed rotational diet, I actually have a PDF in the description below. It covers the most commonly, um, the most common vegetables, starches, proteins, and of course the big three that people are sensitive to. If you wanna come up with your own plan because you have an inclination of which foods that you are sensitive to, it's, it makes more sense probably to just follow this methodology and fill it in with whatever is gonna make most sense for you. Okay, so the way that it works is you're gonna come up with a meal plan for three days and you're gonna be testing a total of 24 variables. So at the end of this three days, assuming that you don't have any symptoms, there's, you're gonna come out of it with 24 foods 
that you are not sensitive to, that you could combine in different ways and create meals, which is great because that means you only have to do a couple cycles and you easily have you know, 80, 100 foods that you know for a fact you don't have any reaction to, which is fantastic. The first step is going to be to come up with a, what I call a safe breakfast. You really wanna have a, um, a hypoallergenic breakfast that is not gonna disrupt you at all. So for the first three days, um, what I recommend is doing something like a blueberry smoothie with an all-in-one powder. I use the uh, daily nutritional support uh, powder. It basically has 15 grams of hypoallergenic vegan protein, all my vitamins and minerals um, for the day, and, um, and it doesn't cause any bloating or anything like that. So it's, it's a very easy thing to go to. You can use any other sort of vegan protein if you want. And blueberries, it's really rare that people have a sensitivity to blueberries, so they're a safe bet. Um, so I would try that. You could also just do the shake and water, so whatever works, but make sure to have breakfast. And so you're gonna do that for three days. And basically what we're doing there is we wanna confirm that you don't have a sensitivity to that breakfast. You wanna have no reaction, you wanna make sure that, okay, there's no, there's no issues there. Okay, once you've confirmed that you have like a safe breakfast, not too many, not too much going on there, then you move on to um, adding the other variables. So in each meal, you're going to be testing one protein and only one protein because we wanna limit the variables. We wanna control the variables. If you introduce too many, then we don't know what uh, is causing the issue and it's really hard to narrow down which one is the culprit. So one protein, two vegetables, and then you're gonna choose one starch. So right now you're looking at an example of a three-day rotational diet and each one is gonna be different. So like I said, you're gonna have the breakfast, the safe breakfast every single day, no changes there, and then you're gonna follow that up with the lunch and the dinner. Um, and you're gonna be choosing that one protein, the two vegetables, and of course that one starch. If you have an inclination that you're sensitive to certain nuts, you can have an afternoon snack of one type of nut, and that would also be manageable as far as limiting the variables. So you just follow this, and every day you check in. So an hour after you eat, how do you feel? Three hours after you eat, how do you feel? Do you feel better? neutral or worse, okay? And just note that down. You wanna maybe have a food diary. And then when you wake up in the morning, you just check in with yourself. Hey, how do I feel? How are my energy levels? How are the symptoms that I was complaining about? So it might've been your joint pain, might be your fatigue, might be that brain fog. Or do you know, how's your, that uh, excess weight kind of around your waist? Do you notice any difference there? So apart from the symptoms that you are trying to remedy, what are some other ways you might know that you're having that immune-based IgG reaction based on the exposure to the food? So you might have um, watery eyes, uh, especially with kids, this is really common. Um, the red ears, you might have heart palpitations. So having a heart rate monitor and noticing, okay, I ate a food and then I noticed that my heart rate seems to be 10 to 15 uh, beats per minute higher than it was before. I'm not any more stressed didn't drink any coffee, so what could have this been? So that, that's also another kind of sneaky symptom. The um, itchy palms, and of course, um, the usual symptoms like the brain fog, the chronic fatigue, uh, the joint pain. So those are ways that you could start to tell as you check in with yourself after every meal, am I having an immune-based reaction? Is there that low-level inflammation going on in my gut? All right, well, that's pretty much it. It's, uh, it's very simple. Um, but it's not easy necessarily, and I know that it could be tedious, but knowing how to nourish yourself and uncovering your food sensitivities can be game-changing. All that grogginess, that joint pain, and a lot of the things you just associate with you know, normal aging can go away, and it could really take your health to the next level, knowing how to nourish your body. So if you find out you're sensitive to a particular food, or do you ha does that mean you have to eliminate it for the rest of your life? Like I've said in other videos, probably not. So you would really have to do a food sensitivity lab to understand the severity of that IgG reaction. And of course, you know, you could do it symptomatically, um, but you know, you may have to maybe abstain from eating that food for a while, heal your gut, specifically if it's related to leaky gut or intestinal permeability. And then in the future, you might be able to have that food relatively often. Um, even a, a pretty severe food sensitivity, you might be able to have that, let's say, one to two times a week as part of your flex meal. So it's really not like you're doomed to never eat this food again. A lot of times people are 
you know, are increasingly having more food sensitivities because our gut health is decreasing. So, you know, and this is another uh, can of worms as to why this is happening on such a regular basis. It's also one of the reasons why people feel really good with intermittent fasting uh, because when they avoid foods that are feeding the um, pathogenic bacteria or opportunistic bacteria in their gut, well, they feel pretty good. So, um, but that's a topic for another video. So I will uh, abstain from that for now. So what are some things that you can find out through this rotational diet? And there's some pretty interesting ones. So for one, you might find out that you have a sensitivity to nightshades, things like um, eggplants, tomatoes. And you know, this is actually not extremely uncommon, um, but it's maybe not ex where I would start uh, per se but you might find that out. You might find out that you have a lectin sensitivity that having the skin of a sweet potato or a potato actually causes that inflammation. So now you know, okay, I can eat sweet potatoes, just remove the skin. You might also figure out that um, maybe eating leftovers. So let's say you cooked some chicken the night before, the next day you have that leftover chicken, but oh, interesting, you had a, uh, a symptom from that. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the bacteria, when you have flesh that you cook, and even if you put it in the fridge, it starts to putrefy. There's bacteria that builds up on it. And so you're reacting to the bacteria on it. So now you know that you're sensitive to that specific strand of bacteria. You need to eat, um, when you do eat animal protein, it should be fresh, not things that are left over because that's gonna exasperate the symptoms that you have. All right, well, that's it for today's video. If you got value, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more updates on how to optimize your mind body and emotions once again if you um, are feeling a little lost or overwhelmed with this which i completely understand go ahead and check out that pdf in the description below it gives you a good starting point of about five rotations that you can try out just to eliminate those foods and you get the kind of red light or green light on them which is going to be great especially if you're someone that feels like you're sensitive to everything and um, you're having all sorts of symptoms and you just don't feel safe eating in general, um, having a set of kind of foods that have the green light for you um, is really going to be pretty game changing. And once again, you know, this is one of many things you can do to really be truthful and sensitive to your bio individuality. A lot of people are just really not honoring their needs. They're not moving for their body type. They're not eating for their body type. They're not supporting um, their lifestyle. You know, they have a very really stressful lifestyle. They aren't really living in accordance to that. And so this channel is um, unlike a lot of kind of biohacking channels and stuff. Um, this is really about harmonizing your life and really honoring uh, what it means to be healthy specifically for you. And this is one of the many tools that you can use in order to reclaim your health, to really take ownership over your biology and live a fulfilling life free of pain and disease, right? And that's what a lot of ancient medical traditions have always taught. So once again, um, if you want to support my work, I publish all this content for free. And uh, please check out my Patreon account. And just for a matcha latte a month, um, I can keep the lights on here and continue publishing this content that is hopefully uh, bringing you value. And so food sensitivities is usually one of many factors that is contributing to your disease. And if you're suffering from chronic fatigue and brain fog, you've tried you know, a bunch of supplement routines, you've done a lot of research online, you may have even seen conventional and alternative health practitioners, and you haven't gotten any results, go ahead and check out my course on coming back online, recovering from chronic fatigue and brain fog. What it does is it goes into the top causes or top root cause imbalances um, that may lead to chronic fatigue and brain fog. I also provide specific protocols if you think that this mirrors you, like specifically like going to case studies, we look at hormones, we look at the exact symptoms, the different ways that it shows up, and I provide detailed advice on how to address that, and specifically what kinds of labs you could do, um, how to do it without labs, and then also how to address the emotional and spiritual components of recovering from this, because it's a very nuanced condition, something that um, you know I go into in my video on my recovery story, and um, this is what I wanna share with you after uh, recovering myself. Um, my mission here is to really help you reclaim your life and, um, and move powerfully through the world. So with that, uh, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you move through this world with ease. It's such a pleasure to be here sharing this information with you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. I'll see you later. Bye.